It was a Friday night. The schoolboys were getting ready for bed in their dorms, some presumably still chatting, others about to fall asleep. Attackers storm in, shattering any sense of security enjoyed by most school children, of normal that may have existed and that may never exist for these students again. More than 300 of them were kidnapped. A chilling video released shortly before they were freed claimed to be by the Abu Bakr Sheikh Aulet faction of Boko Haram and shows one of the schoolboys making a statement clearly under duress and being prompted, surrounded by his classmates looking distraught and covered in dust. You have to dissolve any gang of vigilantes, mm-hmm. close any kind of schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The video confirmed that the boys are alive and that their captors are ready to negotiate their freedom. But just hours later, the Nigerian government said the boys were freed with no conditions and that local bandits were responsible. For days, the schoolboys' parents were shocked, heartbroken, terrified. We have seen so much tears. Our hearts are grieving and we don't even know what to do. We have gotten tired of talking. They were expecting the worst. After all, everyone remembers the pain of the families of the Chibuk schoolgirls. More than a hundred of them still remain missing nearly seven years on. Angry protesters took to the streets. Why we are even here today because we want to tell the federal government that what the federal government is doing is not enough. What the federal government is is doing is not enough. And Mr. President has killed us. Mr. President shows no sympathy over this matter. Even with the joyous news of the release of the schoolboys, there remains an underlying fear that this can happen again. When all people want is an end, once and for all, to the lawlessness that is increasingly defining their lives. Arwa Damon, CNN, Istanbul.